Hey guys, it is Liberty here from Spirit Move Ministries and Prophecy Now podcast. Um, I'm excited to be on with you. This will probably be the last time you hear from me before the summit this weekend. Um, there's so many things happening and uh, I'm so excited. I'm not going to talk about all of them. Um, as you see from the title of the video, four keys to uh, remaining unshakable in this season. And um, the main reason I'm recording this, it's going to be kind of a teaching, but it's going to be times and seasons of the words that I've released and other prophets on what we're walking through, what we're about to walk through. And so many of you have sent emails and um, made comments. <clears throat> I get lots of comments, like 500 to 1,000 per video. And uh, I have a moderator who goes through those. But the thing is, I don't moderate. I have someone who does it. Amen. Because um, it's just too much for me to comb through. And so every now and then I'll catch something and then I might reply to somebody. Um, but in general, I'm, I have a moderator. Okay. And they run the YouTube channel. And so, um, but many of you have emailed. And okay, so first and foremost, I released big news at the beginning of the year still the beginning of the year. It feels like it's already been a lot of year. It's not even the end of January. Um, but the thing is, is um, God is on the move majorly. And um, there's so many things that, that we're coming into, especially this year. This whole 10 years is a big deal. And as you know, I prophesied in 2020 <clears throat> that... Um, this was going to be a, a pivotal season and an era for the body of Christ. And I'm not the only prophet that prophesied that. And so, <clears throat> sorry guys, my allergies are still really annoying. Okay. Um, but I knew I needed to hop on so and talk about these things because, um, as I was saying, with the announcement I released at the beginning of the year or the beginning of this month, um... I've had a lot of feedback emails from people just in the global ministry family. And I want you to know, that thank you so much for your love, support, encouragement, uh, prayers, everything. It's been amazing. Um, but you need to know, because a lot of the emails have said, um, oh my gosh, Liberty, we would have never known you were going through that. We didn't even see it. Like you, you all are always so joyful and happy and you just keep going. And it's like you're unshakable. Uh, how do you even do it? And so we've gotten a lot of feedback and emails. Then when I released, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch the other word I released about the flood because I tell a personal story in that and um, go back and listen to it. But um, so then I've gotten a lot of feedback on that video. People saying, hey, man, you know, I don't know how you stay so happy. What are you doing to remain unshakable? How are you even doing that? And um, this is all being taught to anyone who's under me. Um, you're learning it through the prophecies. You're learning it through the encouragement that I send out um, when God's, he speaks stuff every, every day. And so I'm always releasing it through email or whatever other way. Um, and so I just felt like the Lord was speaking to me yesterday about, Get on and tell everyone the four keys to how you remain unshakable. What are the things that I do? What are the things that, that I rely on or consider or think about? Or how do I stay in a place of remaining unshakable? Now, you need to understand, I'm still human. So it doesn't mean I don't have wretched moments. I do. But because of these four keys that I've chosen to walk in in my life, um... The, the enemy has no room. So when you heard me on my last video and I said that there's no room, I, I don't leave any room for the devil. Um, I'm going to explain to you why. God said, uh, because, you know, typically I release prophecy, but I have done the teaching about the anti-Christmas spirit and um, I've done teaching on, you know, prophetic numbers and that kind of thing. So this is a teaching. You need to hear it because you need to know these four keys and I'm going to keep it as simple as possible and as quick as possible, I have promised that before. I cannot guarantee I will stick to that, okay? Because who knows what stories will pop up as I go. But um, here's the thing. 
we do have to remain unshakable. And this really is about prophecy because all the things I've prophesied and other prophets that are on the same page as I am um, will tell you we are coming into this this 10 year season of first the cleansing of the body. And God had told me that in 2020. I'm not going to repeat all that, but I'm just giving you a foundational basis for what we're walking into and then why these four keys are going to be so important. And you need to know the four keys because you guys keep asking me how, how are we, how can we keep our joy, uh, be happy, keep going, not quit, not give up, not let depression attach to us and all these other lying spirits. How do we do this? And so, but you need to understand the foundation of why you need them before I give them to you. So in 2020, the Lord had given me a prophecy about uh, the foundation of the church. He said the foundation of the church is faulty. It's It's been built on a faulty foundation. Those were his exact words. And he goes, I'm breaking up that foundation. And the church needs a whole new redo. The man-made ministries, um, uh, the seeker-friendly, don't get offended, don't be religious. All these legalism, all this stuff that has built ministries, God has to deal with those with those ministries because they don't represent him. And let me just tell you this right now, any ministry or church that denies the Holy Spirit and the moving of the Holy Spirit is not of God. I'm going to just say it and I'm going to offend some people. Here's the thing. He left and sent the Holy Spirit back. Now I could get into 10 messages. Here's the thing. That's what was sent back. He died. We can receive salvation. We get baptized in water. But he, he said, I leave so that something else can return, which was the Holy Ghost and fire to live in us. And he has to be welcome. Okay. So that's a whole nother thing. So there's been a portion of the a body of Christ that has not welcomed the Holy Spirit. They're going to learn a lesson about that. That's a part of the shaking. Then you have people who are not really all in. Their hearts are not right. Yes, we want them saved. Yes, we want them to be redeemed. We want it to change. But some of them have to be pruned off, you guys, because God already knows who's the wheat and who's the tares. And the tares get burned in the fire. And I'm not going to go into all that. I'm just kind of walking you through and then I'm going to give you these four keys. But the reality is you have to have these four keys for what you've already walked in because God flipped the lid in 2020. Amen. And when he said the church was built on a faulty foundation, this whole thing about being in the four walls, um, he said, and see, you have to understand, I was already doing what I was supposed to be doing. This is why he speaks everything to me because my heart and call was already you know, I'm prophetic, but I'm evangelistic. And so reaching people, getting them saved, getting them baptized, seeing them baptized in fire and walking out what I know was available to me after I was radically saved is been my, my life's call. And so he speaks to me because I was already doing it in 2020. And so when you're already doing it and you have that close walk with Christ, then he shares things with you and he's intimate with you and he reveals things to you and this is how the prophetic works and so um and how people get particularly chosen to walk in it at higher levels because not everybody is at ever the same level all the time in all things the, everyone's giftings are different even though we're all supposed to be walking in the fire that is not a gift that is life okay um but the thing is, the Lord said, the days of everybody come to us, the church, the building, the walls is over. He said, my people need to go and get them. It's time to go get instead of sitting and expecting people, the lost to just come mosey into your church. Hey, I'm not saying that people don't do that. We've had so many people saved in our services. There's been thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people saved through my ministry and it's beautiful and amazing. And yes, you do have to have services and people need to be invited to things and, and you, you still, you know, you're doing that. 
but the thing of staying in one building and and just building your little empire are done. And so the shaking has had to happen. And the Lord told me 10 years of cleanse. Uh, there's going to be seven years of cleansing. You're probably thinking, man, that's scary. No, we're in the third year, but there's still more to go. You guys know there's been, it's the cleansing is here. Um, and if you go back to all the other prophecies I've released, um, I'm, I'm uh, setting my, my people on fire. My, my body is dead, dry bones. 40% uh, of you guys are doing what you're supposed to and you're on fire and you're doing it. The rest of them are religious and legalistic and seeker friendly and they don't welcome the Holy Ghost and they're about to get a spanking. This is what is happening right now. People are going to have a choice to buck up and get on board with the Holy Ghost or they're going to be a tear that gets burned. I know that sounds extreme, but you guys, if you've been following me for any amount of years, you know I've already prophesied all this way back. And so the thing is, is do you really think that every all the damage done by all the things in the church that God's not pleased with is going to, is going to, he can just cure it overnight? No, it didn't come overnight. He's got to get the religion out. He's got to he's got to get the seeker friendly out. He's got to get all this stuff out of his way. Because the biggest thing that saves a soul is the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Spirit is not present, then you really don't get conviction. What happens if you don't This is a whole bunch of teachings in one. If you what happens if you don't get convicted? Then you get saved and then you live the rest of your life like you always did. You do what you've always done. You don't, you don't quit partying. You don't quit doing drugs. You don't quit sleeping around. I'm just being real. You guys expect it from me. I'm laying it out. And so the thing is, is that's not Christ. He came so we can become a new creature, a new creation. Old things pass away. Our old man dies and we're alive in Christ. And so that's supposed to be happening. It cannot happen without the Holy Ghost and fire. It can't. Okay, moving along. So because God's doing all this, this is the prophetic side of the keys I'm about to tell you. Is there's things he's trying to teach us. Now, as you know, if you've been following me at all for a while, my second book, which is about finished, is all about uh, preparing God's people to carry the glory. And it's all times and seasons, prophecies, stages that God is, is taking the body through that he has shown me and told me. And I've released those words and I'm still releasing them to get them to the point where they can be prepared to carry his glory because we're all called to carry the glory. There's no superstars in the world. There's no, just though, just Smith, you know, Smith Wigglesworth. It's not like that. We're all supposed to be Smith Wigglesworth. We're all supposed to be psycho for Jesus. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, there's things you're going to have to put in place. These four keys I'm about to tell you. So you can become a glory carrier. Okay, so I'm giving away a little bit of what I'm going to be teaching in my second book, but it's okay. I'm like, Jesus, if you need me to get this out there, because you guys, so many of you have emailed me and you've asked me, how do, how do I do this? You know, what does it even mean to be unshakable? How do we get there? So these four keys are going to get you there. And I'm going to keep them as simple as possible, as I said, but I needed to give you a foundation to understand why you need to listen to to this, to these four keys, you guys, because everything that has been prophesied, if you're going to survive it, you're going to need these four keys. And number two, you're going to need to understand that you're, you're being put in a position of not just surviving, but thriving. We're not called to survive the end times by the skin of our teeth. No, we're called to thrive and get other people saved. Do you think the billion souls that's been prophesied, I've prophesied it. 
Do you think they're just, the devil's just going to hand them over? Nope. So because of that, we're not supposed to just survive until we get raptured out of here. We are meant to be doing the work until he comes, not hunkering down and hiding and surviving until whatever. Um, persecution will come. All this stuff's going to come. If you're not unshakable, you ain't going to make it. Yep. If this is freaking you out, good. Because you need to be on fire for this level of what God's taking the whole body of Christ into. Amen. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Four keys. Now, the first key, before I tell you the keys, you have to learn to camp at these places. Okay, you ever been on a camping trip and you're like, I'm going to go camping because it's so cool and I'm going to come sit out and I'm going to enjoy nature and I'm going to get some fresh breath and I'm going to clear my head and I'm just going to go sit and I'm going to relax for a minute. Okay, you can relax. You can go camping within these four keys and still be on fire, rocking and rolling for Jesus, doing whatever he's called you to do. You go with the fire, you go do it, okay? And so... um. You're camping at these places, okay? Because it, camping is supposed to be a place of rest. There is rest in Christ. It only comes from him. It's not of the world, okay? So moving along. Key number one. These are the four things what I'm telling you are, is what I do to stay me. And leave no room for the devil, okay? Number one. I remember the testimonies of the past. I remember what God has already done. So you need to understand, I eat, sleep, and drink Jesus. I am a massive Jesus freak. He's the love of my life. That's how I roll. So um, I think of the things that he's already done. The testimonies that have come in through our ministry of people getting saved, getting delivered from demons, getting healed at one of our events or one of, one of the crusades we're called to do, whatever it is, I remember those things. That is key number one. The Lord is very clear, and I wasn't going to get all these scriptures out, but I'm going to reference them as we go along, okay? Um, it is by the word of our testimony. It's the blood and the word of our testimony is how we overcome the devil. And so the testimony is the first key. Not necessarily always your testimony, but any testimony of where you know Christ has worked. Um, maybe you're like, well, I don't run a ministry, and so I don't go out and, and, and heal the sick, and so I don't have those kind of testimonies. Yes, but you have them in your own life. Maybe, and it might not just be your salvation one, but you know, a family member getting healed, or you getting healed, or whatever, whatever it is. You have some kind of testimonies from your life in Christ. So key number one, remembering what he's already done, okay? Key number two, staying excited and passionate about what he's currently doing. How he's moving right now. What he's doing in your life right now. The, the key things, the, the things that you notice that your growth, your, your new revelations, Maybe you're getting dreams and visions. You never had them before. Maybe God's constantly confirming things to you that you knew he was telling you this, like even maybe about the end times. I don't know. But whatever it is, um, that's key number two. Focusing on what he's doing now, what his presence is doing right now, what his spirit wants to do right now, being present in the moment, okay? Okay. That is key number two. That's the second place you can camp. Um, I, could go, I could go into that forever. Um, that's a big one for me. Um, I'm always excited. So, because there's always something Jesus is up to. He's always, it's, it's, he's always revealing. He's always speaking. He's always moving. That, keep the passion for what he's doing in the moment. Don't miss what's happening in the present. Okay. That is key number two. Number three, the third one, you guys, it's very important that you understand 
when I say camping, it's there's rest in these places. And it doesn't seem like it because there's a lot of work involved. But there's rest in these places. Amen. And when you stay, so key number two was staying in the present. When you stay in the present, you're basically saying, um, I hear what you're doing right now. I see what you're doing right now. I acknowledge it right now. Even if you don't know how it's all going to turn out, you choose to acknowledge it now and you're placing yourself in a position of staying within the presence and the fire. Amen. Focus on what he's doing right now. Key number three, think about the end goal. Think about what he's going to do in the future, what, what you know he's going to do, what your heart says he's going to do, the plans for the future, whatever your ministry has been called to, the goals your God's called you to meet, um, the souls that are going to get saved, or maybe it's, it's a ministry God's called you to start or build or create or a godly business. I don't know what it is, but you think about the future. And so that's key number three. Now see, Paul said, I strive towards what I know the end goal is. That keeps you running the race. It keeps you going. And, and here's the thing. When you look forward, the victory's already been won in Christ. That's the third key, is knowing he already won. And so you stay passionate and on fire for what, it, what you're going to do in Christ, what he's called you to do, what you believe and know he's going to accomplish. This is key number three. This is the third one. When Paul says you don't look back, what he's talking about on that is your past, your hurts, your rejection, all the things. He's not saying not to look back on your testimony. What he's saying is stay focused forward. So that is key three, is, is considering what he's going to do and staying excited about the future of, of all that he's going to do. It, especially we are in the end times, you guys. This is like the most amazing time to be alive. Amen. Um, and here's number four. And this one is going to, it's, it's all full of the glory, but this one's, this one's the most heartfelt to me. When number one, number two, and number three, I'm finding it hard to camp at those places and find rest. Then I pull out the secret weapon of key number four. And that is, I go back to the day I was radically saved when I was little Liberty, I knew nothing about Christ. I was not religious. I was not raised in religion. I knew nothing. I had no clue. I mean, I didn't even believe there was a God. I was basically self-proclaimed atheist because I did not think there was a God. I had such a terrible childhood and my mom was an alcoholic and the abuse and everything that was happening. I was like, there can't be a God because life has been terrible. So, um, I just lived like that none of that existed. So then when I got radically saved and I spoke the name of Jesus and demons had to flee, I knew in that moment that, that, that one second, it all just dumped out on me, the Holy Ghost, the Bible, the truth, the reality that Jesus is real. Um, uh, he died for me. Um, the devil's real. He hates me. Um, you know, all these things that I didn't even know existed or acknowledged all of a sudden now, boom. And then I was radically saved and literally became a psycho for Jesus overnight. And I never looked back. You couldn't have paid me a million dollars. And so, um, because when I was being attacked by demons, but I didn't know that when I was first, before I was radically saved and I was getting attacked by demons, I didn't know that that's what was happening because I didn't believe in it. I didn't know any of that. I, there was no religious history in my life. So, um, and when I was told by a, by someone, go see this pastor, um, they'll tell you what to do because it sounds like demons. Well, I had no clue about nothing. So I went to this pastor, I was like 16 years old and he's like, you, it's, it's demonic, a Pentecostal pastor, the church I ended up being a part of. He said, it's demonic. You need to rebuke in the name of Jesus. And so, um, 
I was like, I don't even know what rebuke means. I don't know nothing. But if the demons show back up, I'll try anything. Anyway, so moving along, um, a few months later, I'm 16, and I get attacked by these demons again. And this time, it was my last resort because I wasn't thinking Jesus, you know, because I didn't serve Jesus. And um, I was thinking all these other things like... Uh, I can outrun the demons because I used to do, I used to be athletic and do sports. And so I was like, I got to outrun them. And like, you know, these things you think. And so then finally, the last moment, um, I was like, oh, I can rebuke in the name of Jesus. And I didn't even know it, what it meant or if it would even work. And so I rebuked the demons in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's literally all I did. And poof, they disappeared. And so I was like, whoa. And so it was shortly after that when I was barely 17, um, that I got radically saved because then those months of progression from that moment of me knowing that knowledge, I didn't have any clue about being saved or I really had to understand any of that. And then moving forward, I'm giving you the shortest version possible. You guys moving forward a few months go by. I'm at my house watching the 700 club, never seen it in my life. I'm watching it. And, um, I'm like, huh? So I was interested in it for whatever reason. And so I was watching it. And at the end, uh, Pat Robertson's did the prayer, if you want to receive Christ. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just here in my living room. I think I do because I had had all that issues with the demons and I rebuked them and they left in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyway, so I got radically saved on my floor that day. Um, demons manifested. I was attacked. Um, I'm not going to tell the whole thing. Um, 700 Club did featured my life story on their uh, program in like 2015, 2016. And so um, the thing is, is when those demons begin to manifest after I accepted Christ in that moment, um, I didn't know anything except for rebuking in the name of Jesus because it had worked before. So I did that and the demons had to leave. And they weren't happy. And after that moment, I knew that God was real. Jesus was real. The Bible was real. It was all real. And Jesus was all powerful. Amen. So that's my fourth secret weapon key. If key number one, looking back on the testimonies, um, it's hard. I'm finding it hard to camp there. Um, key number two, the present Holy Ghost, what's happening in the moment, the great things he's doing in the moment. I find it hard to camp there and hang on to it. Number three, I go to number three. And um, if I go to number three, thinking about what he's going to do, looking ahead at the future, goals, plans, the, the amazingness of Christ and, and what it means to run the race. If I'm camping there and it's just, it's not working then I pull out my secret weapon of I take myself back and I camp in that little apartment when little Liberty got radically saved on the floor of her apartment and demons had to flee at the power of Jesus Christ's name, just at his name. And so I take myself back there and I sit there and I'm like, this is the truth. The truth is Jesus already won. And devil, you're a liar. And I'm not going to listen to anything you have to say because you're a liar. Because that's true. That day is true. So here's the thing. Those are your four keys. And so because I choose always to walk in one of those keys, this is why he has no room. There's no way for him to get in. He can't get in. Nothing works. You can ask my team. I'm sure I irritate them a lot. You have to grow if you're under me. Um, you're going to have to grow. You have to grow. You're going to become unshakable because that's how I roll. Um, I don't get anxiety. I'm not, I'm not really afraid of anything. Um, I trust God fully in all things. Um, and so because of that, that's how I live. And so if someone else is around me and they want to be like all depressed, 
I'm the wrong person, except for I'll give you deliverance, you know, we'll get the demon off. But you know what I'm saying? So I won't partner with that. And I'm not going to agree with it because it's a lie from the pit of hell. So here's the thing. If you camp at those, if you choose one of those four places to camp, those four keys to remaining unshakable, you will leave no room for the devil. You will leave no room for him. You have to make a choice to leave no room for him. You have to exist and live in a way to where he has no room. And then you be ready at all times to pull out secret weapon number four, key number four. And you go camp back on that day when you knew that you knew that Christ was real and you accepted him into your heart. And he began to change your life forever. You do what you need to do. You camp at one of those places. Each of those places carries a protection. It's like a bubble. The enemy can't get in. And so those are your four keys, guys. I did not expect the video to be this long, but honestly, you must have needed to hear it because God was speaking to me yesterday. He's like, you've got to get on and share your four keys of how you stay, how you are. That's, that's, this, these are my four keys, guys. And the whole body of Christ is going to have to learn it. And this is why I'm writing a book. Well, it's almost done already, actually. It'll probably be being done by next year by Charisma. But the thing is, is um, these four keys will make you a completely different type of Christian. The devil can't get in. Amen. Don't, don't give him room. That's how you remain unshakable. He is a liar, you guys. He is a liar. Um... I got people trying to call me. Okay. I love you guys. I'm going to go. I have a hundred things to do to, to do today. If you didn't watch the flood video. So I'm getting into my condo today. So funny story is I get into my condo today. I'm going to get all moved in. And then I leave at the crack of dawn tomorrow to go to Montgomery, Alabama to do a prayer summit. And I go right back into a hotel. So this is just hilarious. I love my life. I love Jesus. He cracks me up. And um, I love you guys. The four keys. Remain unshakable. Amen and amen.